see Vigilante here. Again, talking about Games of Thrones. Why? Well, because of these last two links I'll put to the end of the video. Um, after hearing it, I've, as I said, I've always had a problem with this last season of Games of Thrones. And I'm not much of a big reader. So the books was not something I could have maybe got my, my teeth into. I grew up with my father reading to me The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. But just looking at those books scare me, especially with the amount of characters involved and trying to remember who's what and stuff. So basically I relied on the TV series. But I was always defending of the show because of the director, uh, because of the writer was involved with the TV show. That was until he ran out of the material for the show. He'd still to write his last book. But he gave the, the screenwriters the idea of how the, the story should end. So they carried it on for here. We've heard lots of people complain maybe after season 3 or 4 what not. The storylines and what not got a wee bit... Zzz. And I've heard so many stories. So many... So much different between the books and the TV show. So... That was for granted, but as long as it just stayed in the parameter of what's making the TV show, you know, what it's aiming towards. And um, as I say, when I watched that that, that season three episode, uh, season eight episode three episode, when we waited so many years for the Night King to come along, and then it was finished within one episode, and we wanted to see death and destruction over and over again. And then, again, spoilers for those of you who haven't seen it. But then we have Arya destroying the Night King. Where, since episode 1, it was foretold the long winter that we hardly seen. It's only up in the north. Um, and then it's it's been prophesied, really, and, everything, and all the clues are pointing to Jon Snow and the Night King uh, having having the fight and John King there was one prophecy saying the prince will appear and save the land of the living which is supposed to be John Snow but the writers have the screenwriters actually said it they just couldn't get it to work now they never said who in one of these wee videos but we all assume the reason why they changed it is because for somehow or another they still wanted to surprise people and not be too obvious well we have the writer of the book saying you know, if the butler did it, if you're leaving clues that the butler killed the crit, you can't just change it just because somebody might have caught on to who the killer is. You don't change it because that is then dismissing everything that you put in preparation. You know, you, you've been leaving clues so for people to follow. And to be honest, we we as a people like to feel smart. We, we like to feel that like we work something out. And that uh, um, we followed the clues right, and uh, and yeah, sometimes we, we do want a happy ending every now and again, especially for Games of Thrones. We want, uh, for me, uh, owner of a Tyrion model and uh, and the box sets from DVD to Blu-ray is and um, key rings and everything else. I want the show to end in a way where I would pass it on to somebody and keep it and buy the collection and everything and it all really depends on how the story ends if the story ends in a way which we're happy about then we'll buy the whole complete story and that's what writers have to worry about what they have to give an ending which the majority will like and so far in this season we've had um the prophecies basically front out flop thrown out the window. We've had people comparing it to The Last Jedi where it's just mocked everything that's went that's went on before. And to have the writer basically okay about it is a wee bit pants because he, he said in one of these interviews that uh, you know he's he's okay the TV are going to change it um, but for, uh, and that's okay with him because it works and it somehow works that way for the TV, but it doesn't for the book. The book would be one version, and the TV for the other. And uh, I'm just that. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sit well with me, especially when, as a viewer, you watch the TV and it's his pride and joy. It's his. It's his creation. He would want. The, you should want the, the TV to somehow homage the book, and especially when it comes to key moments. 
and and a character's uh, struggle, you know, because we we had a plan that the, the when the dead come over the wall, that's it. That's when the big battle takes place, and uh, and uh, we had all this prophecy about the prince, and we had all this prophecy about Bran and stuff, and, and everything else. And so far, this season eight has not promised anything. It's not given us what the majority of people want, and you can just say, "Oh, that's just to surprise you and keep your." No, it isn't, because most of us have put all the clues together, and um, you've basically the last minute thought, "No, screw you, we are re we are rewriting it." Now, a lot of people. Now, my big thing as well for the for that episode was you could hardly see a thing. It's about two years away from doing the special effects to, to have, hardly see a thing and now a lot also other people have said about the the battlefield right and how it wasn't properly now I don't know who the director or who anybody else sits there and, and discusses what should the army be like should we have the cavalry and the start the cavalry we should we have the guys and the horses running into complete darkness with the light torches? Should should we have that, or should we or should we have them back behind the pit, the fiery pit? Should we have the catapults, you know, further back or basically getting used really? So there were a lot of arguments in that, and to be honest, yeah, a wee bit of it bothered me, but uh, and a lot of people saying no, they had a lot of time to prepare. You know, and they put the wee glass stones on the walls and stuff like that. But again, what's the point in that when you're not going to see anything as well? You're, you hardly seen the dragons fight. But I think what really goes at people is the fact that Jon Snow never got his moment. And now, I could be too hasty by putting this up and somehow they've rearranged the storyline and Jon Snow is going to come as the hero at some point. And a lot of people say, no, that's becoming too much like superheroes and superheroes save the day. But sometimes we want that. You know, and this is the thing when you when you talk about, oh, the villains win. You know, when you end a movie, can we not make the, the baddies win for a change? Well, you could, yeah, yeah. It would be shocking, yes, it would be. But again, would you honestly want to buy it? It's like The Walking Dead. I've never invested money into a zombie series because we all get fucked in the end. What's the point of, of following somebody's story when we know at the end he's going to be eaten by a zombie? We had the sheriff in, in The Walking Dead who we've been following his story arc and I don't know what's happened to him, I just know that he's left the show. And that was me leaving the show because I was interested in that character. He was right there from the start, like Jon Snow like all these wee bits of clues and prophecies that led up to this last season. So, I don't know how RRS Martin feels about it, but it's it's, uh, it's no joke. <laughs> but no, it's two episodes to go. <laughs> and, and then you have scenes where you have this wee small army on the desert in front of King's Landing. Where did the desert come from? And no one says, hey, why did she not just wipe out this little wee band of men outside the gate? They really, I mean, I don't know if they can somehow made two different scenarios, you know, how, uh, of how to end the show. Because it, but it's coming across that they listen to what people want and try to give it to them or, or, or something. I do hope there's some form of back out, you know, there's some sort of clause there where they can actually change something after reading people's uh, reaction to this season, that they can probably put stuff back in. It's basically like Zack Snyder's BVS all over again. You shouldn't have touched it. You should have listened to the master, which was the author or director who's created this. That, those are the people you should have went in contact with, you should have phoned the writer, and says, what should we do here? Instead of just thinking that you two guys could end it yourselves. Well, this is DC Vigilante. Probably my second last Games of Thrones uh, video. Uh, two episodes to go. Who knows? Uh, 
Thanks so much, Jeff. Catch you later.